So I love the internal combustion engine, but unfortunately, it seems like many believe that the internal combustion engine is a thing of the past. Most manufacturers are pursuing electric and hybrid solutions, and even governments are making it harder and harder for real engines to survive. But worry not, there are many independent companies out there developing their own new takes on combustion engines. These new engines are cleaner, stronger, and in some cases even smaller than conventional offerings. Now in the past, I have covered some of these awesome engines, and since then they have progressed, and in the future I might make some update videos, but today we will focus on something new. This is the device barrel engine. Now the device barrel engine is a revolutionary concept in internal combustion engines. Designed by Matt Jackson and engineered by Dimitros Tardales, it promises significant advantages over traditional engines in terms of power density, efficiency and size. In this video, we will delve into the intricate workings of the device barrel engine, exploring its unique features, potential fuels, power output and reliability. So at the heart of the device barrel engine lies a distinct architecture, the post piston axial design. Unlike conventional engines, with pistons moving up and down in a single cylinder, the device engine features four cylinders arranged in a barrel configuration. Each cylinder houses two pistons facing each other. These pistons move inwards simultaneously, compressing the air-fuel mixture in the center of the cylinder. This unique design eliminates the need for a cylinder head, a significant source of heat loss in traditional engines. The pistons are connected to a central crankshaft running parallel to the cylinders, hence the term axial. This configuration offers several advantages. For one, by eliminating the cylinder head and arranging the cylinders around the crankshaft, the device engine achieves a remarkably compact size for its displacement. This makes it ideal for applications where space is a premium, such as drones, motorcycles, and even potential use as a range extender in electric vehicles. Also, when looking at the power this thing produces, it could easily run a car by itself. Then another benefit of the post-piston design is that it minimizes friction, as the forces pushing the piston cancel each other out. Additionally, the vise employs a novel piston support system that further reduces friction, leading to increased efficiency and potentially a longer engine lifespan. On to power. You see, despite its compact size, the device barrel engine boasts an impressive power output. Initial estimates project a power output of 263 horsepower for a 2-liter engine without any optimization. This translates to a significant power density, meaning that the engine packs a lot of punch in a small package. Furthermore, the device suggests that this is just the beginning, hinting at potential for even greater performance with further development. And remember, because it's so compact, it's also lighter and can fit in smaller cars. Also, it can be made bigger depending on applications, so the potential for this engine is endless. But in today's day and age, efficiency and greenness is really important. So is it polar bear friendly? Well, the Vice made efficiency one of their key focuses when they developed this engine, and it is evident when looking at the engine and its features. For instance, the engine can deactivate individual cylinders under low load conditions. This optimizes fuel consumption in conditions where you don't need all of the power. But when you put your foot flat, all pistons fire as normal. Then a sophisticated engine management system controls various engine parameters like fuel injection and ignition timing. This precise control allows for efficient combustion and minimizes wasted fuel. Another thing which will get you guys excited is the fact that the device engine is designed to operate on various fuels, including gasoline, potentially offering future possibilities for alternative fuels like biofuels. This adaptability makes it a future-proof option that aligns with the growing demand for sustainable solutions. So all in all, this thing seems great, but there are always two sides to a coin. So here are the challenges and problems with this design. Well, Here's the biggest problem. The traditional internal combustion engine has been researched and improved upon for years and years. We understand them really well and we have brought manufacturing costs way down over the years, as well as improve upon their efficiency and power delivery. Whereas this tech has been around since 1993, but the amount of development, testing and progress is far inferior 
to traditional systems. This means that production cost will likely be more for this engine than a normal engine. There is also less data out there and there is a lot of questions about reliability of the crank system, which in an axial engine is normally a swash plate. Now you might wonder, what the hell is a swash plate? Well, this is a swash plate. You see, as the pistons move up and down, they push and rotate this disc. That mechanical force is what we use to power the vehicles. But the question is, how reliable are those bearings that run on the plate? How long would they last? And when they go, how expensive is the repair bill? But all of that said, there seems to be a lot of promise behind this engine design as there are multiple companies developing their own versions of this engine. The Vice is just one of the companies, and competition brings out the best in products. But what do you guys think of this new take on the internal combustion engine? It does promise good power and great scalability, and if they do manage to make it reliable and affordable, I can't see why it wouldn't be a success. But at the end of the video, please let me know what you guys think of this engine, what you guys think of the design, and let me know if there's any other new weird engines out there that you guys would like me to research. Let me know down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel, and if you guys did like it, you'll most probably like most of my other stuff. So just go through my channel, see if there's something else you like, I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, eh?